Hi everyone and welcome to learn A-level biology for free with Miss Estrick. In this video I'm going to be covering water as a biological molecule, looking at its structure and how those structural properties relate to its function. If you are new here just click subscribe and then you won't miss out on any future videos. So the first thing to look at then is the structure of water. Now this is one of the biological molecules that is in the AQA specification and it's a really important molecule and we're going to be looking at why. But this is why 60 to 70 percent of your body is made up of water. So first of all the structure, it's a dipolar molecule, sometimes you'll see it being described as just a polar molecule, but what we mean by dipolar is the fact that it has two different regions that are charged. And it's this uneven distribution of charge that leads to so many of its important properties. So on the diagram, these symbols here are delta, and they mean slight positive and slight negative. So it's not a full positive or full negative charge. And the oxygen has a slight negative charge, the hydrogens have a slight positive charge. And because of these charges, that can then result in hydrogen bonds forming between an oxygen and a hydrogen of neighbouring water molecules. So those hydrogen bonds that form are going to be key to the five properties that water has. And we'll go through what we mean by it being a metabolite, a solvent, by water having a high heat capacity, having a large latent heat of vaporisation, and finally, it having strong cohesion. So we'll look at how the structure links to those and why each of those are so important. So first of all, we'll be looking at it being a metabolite. And what this means is it's involved in lots of chemical reactions or metabolism. And some examples that you'll learn throughout the course are where water is used in photosynthesis, in photolysis, it being involved in hydrolysis and condensation reactions as well, which you may have already covered on the course within biological molecules. And I'll link up here some of the videos that link to this, so the photosynthesis and the hydrolysis and condensation reactions. Now, this is one reason why approximately 90% of your plasma in blood is water, and most of your blood is plasma. And this just here is demonstrating one of the hydrolysis reactions. And this is in carbohydrates in digestion, or it could be in the hydrolysis of glycogen in your liver or muscle cells as well. So we've got the polysaccharide. With the addition of water, you can split these bonds to separate the molecules back into their monomers. So next is the fact that water is a really good solvent or a universal solvent. And what that means is it has the ability to dissolve many substances. Now that is useful because we've just said for animals, 90% of your plasma is made of water. And the plasma is what transports molecules long distances around your body. And if they can dissolve in the water, it's easier to transfer them. Same idea for plants, so they don't have blood, but they do have xylem and phloem, and in those you have sugars dissolved in the water and phloem, and in the xylem you have mineral ions dissolved. So again, that is why it's important. But what provides this property goes back to this dipolar nature of water. So because of that slight positive charge on the hydrogen, that means the hydrogen part of water will attract any negative ions in a compound. And we can see that here in sodium chloride. The um, chloride is negative and that is attracting the hydrogen part of the water. The oxygen in water has a slight negative charge. So that means it will attract any positive ions in solutes. And that is what we can see here. The oxygen is attracting the sodium ions. And because of that two different types of attraction, it can split up that compound. And that is what we mean by dissolving. So water molecules can dissolve um, polar molecules, but water cannot dissolve non-polar molecules. 
So molecules like lipids, they do not dissolve in water um, and therefore we describe them as being hydrophobic. So lipids will actually repel water. Water has a high specific heat capacity. And what that term means is it takes a lot of energy to raise the temperature of water. And if you're doing A-level chemistry, you'll have a more specific definition than that. But that is the level of detail that you need for A-level biology. Now, the reason that it needs a lot of energy to raise the temperature of water is because water molecules all join together by hydrogen bonds. And to raise the temperature of the water, you need to break those bonds and that requires energy. And that would be in the form of heat. Now, this is useful for a couple of reasons. First of all, it means that temperature of the water remains relatively stable. So that means that even if the surrounding temperature changes a lot, a body of water should not fluctuate significantly. And that could be externally, thinking about rivers or oceans, or you could be thinking about internally, the temperature of your blood. So that is why the internal temperature of plants and animals do remain relatively constant, even if the outside temperature is very, very hot. It's also important for aquatic organisms because it means they're able to live in bodies of water where it should provide a stable temperature environment. And the reason that animals and plants need to have this stable temperature is because of enzyme controlled reactions. If the animal or plant gets too cold, there's not enough kinetic energy for successful collisions between the enzyme and the substrate. But if it becomes too hot, the enzyme denatures. So a large latent heat of vaporization. Now this is a similar idea to what we just went through. But this time it's referring to the fact that a lot of energy is needed to convert water in its liquid state to a gaseous state. The cause of this is again due to the hydrogen bonds which form between water molecules. And the idea yet again is in order for water to go from being a liquid to a gas, you need to break the hydrogen bonds between all of those water molecules. And to break all of those hydrogen bonds, it requires a lot of energy. And therefore, a lot of heat energy is required to convert liquid water into water vapour. Now, this is an advantage because it provides a cooling effect to both animals and plants. So humans, for example, when we're really hot, we release sweat through our skin. And that then enables the heat from your skin to be absorbed into the water in the sweat. And that heat that has then been removed from your skin into the sweat is used to evaporate the liquid water and sweat to become water vapor. So that is why we sweat, because you can then remove the heat from the skin to evaporate the water. And because water has a large latent heat of vaporization, it will remove large amounts of heat energy from your skin. Now this is the same for plants, they do not sweat, but plants do release water vapor by transpiration. So when the plants are transpiring, that does actually provide a cooling effect for plants as well. Strong cohesion is our fifth and final property. And what we mean by cohesion is water molecules sticking together. And that is due to the hydrogen bonds. And because water molecules stick together, it means that water can move up the xylem in plants in a continuous column of water, rather than moving up a droplet at a time. And this is an advantage as it's much easier to pull up a column of water rather than separate droplets. And I'm gonna link here my video on transpiration and this continuous column of water and cohesion tension theory so you can fully understand that. The second advantage of cohesion is it provides surface tension. And this is why we have certain animals that are able to live on the surface of ponds. So it provides a habitat for organisms on the surface of the water 
and therefore they're going to be able to avoid predators within the water. So that is it for the structure and properties of water. If you have found it helpful, please give the video a thumbs up.